Hey guys, what's up? This is Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I have a review of Nectar's keyboard DAW controller, the P6. Um, I was thinking about how to do this, um, or the P4 actually is what I'm reviewing. I've had it for about a year, um, and I like it, but I don't know if it's uh, exactly the keyboard controller that all of us have been hoping for. So we're going to get into that in a second, but... Um, I thought about filming me actually using it, but I just couldn't find a good way to get the angles. Um, and I'm going to kind of talk about that in a second. So we're just going to go over their web page uh, instead and look at some of the pictures of it. Um, the first thing I want to note is that the panorama is more than just a MIDI keyboard. It's kind of like a DAW controller. So you could think of it if you've used something like Machine, um, the machine controller with machine, a lot of, uh, the upper section of, let's see if we can find a good picture. Um, a lot of the upper section here allows you to control your DAW and, uh, access functions within your DAW that save you a lot of time. Um, and it does that pretty well. I've tried it with both reason and with logic, and it really does streamline the process. But it's not nearly as smooth as something like Machine, which is custom built by the DAW manufacturer to manage the DAW. Nonetheless, I do think these functions are super helpful. They're pretty intuitive, and they're really great for mixing, for dialing in a sound, that sort of thing. Um, so the way this system works is you get the keyboard, then you go to their website, and you have to download some specific firmware for your controller to match your DAW. And you can do multiple DAWs on it. I've got both Logic and uh, Reason on my controller. They both work fine. And then you have to download the drivers. I found this, it, it's you know a five minute, 10 minute process. It's easy enough to do. Once you're up and rolling, you're good to go. There's also communities that have, um, and the, this firmware is gonna come pre-mapped with all of the standard stock instruments. Uh, that come with any of those DAWs. So if you're using Reason, it'll come mapped to like Europa, Rack, Dr. Octorex, that sort of thing. If you're using Logic, it'll have the ESX24, whatever it is. They're all in there. All these knobs will have some useful functions. Um, so that's really helpful. I know when they, when Propeller has went from Reason 9 to Reason 10, uh, Nectar created an update patch to take advantage of the new features, so it seems like they're continuing to support it. Um, the DAW integration is pretty good. I give it a 4 out of 5. Uh, it's certainly really useful, um, but we're going to get into some of the things that aren't so useful. Um, first of all, I will say that there are community patches out there to run like rack extensions and VSTs and things like that. But it's not as smooth of an integration as what you have in the DAW. So it can be kind of frustrating if you're like me, um, where I mainly use contact instruments or native instruments, instruments, um, which almost makes me wish I had a um, complete control as opposed to the Nectar. Although what the other things the Nectar do make it kind of appealing. Um, so what I found is it doesn't work that it doesn't work terribly with um, like the native instruments plugins, but you do have to manually map in a lot of those, um, at least out of the box. So um, let's now turn to the layout, the features, that sort of thing, because that's really what I want to get into. So the first thing I want to just talk about is the keyboard. Um, and the keys themselves play all right. I, I've had cheaper keyboards, which I kind of actually enjoyed more, or I've had weighted keyboards in the past, which I <clears throat> definitely enjoyed more. And this is a semi-weighted keyboard, which is kind of like the uncanny valley of keyboards. It's certainly very playable. You can get different dynamic ranges, and the aftertouch is phenomenal. Um, but... It's, it's definitely not like the keyboard of your dreams in terms of how it plays, but it does the job. But turning now to the pads, the drum pads, they are terrible. They feel stiff. They don't give you any real feedback. 
you have to, I have, oh, I have a ton of trouble getting the right velocities in. Either always have to do just a fixed velocity, which means, you know, you're just always hitting at the hardest, or I play it in and then manually edit it. Um, they don't feel good. They don't give you any feedback. They are, um, really bad. So, uh, well, <laughs> that's all I have to say about that. If you use pads a lot, this might not be the keyboard for you, or you might want to think about just getting a cheap pad controller to go with it. Um, now turning to just the function section, this is really useful once you actually get in the mind frame of using it. You've got a lot of controls here. Uh, play, stop, start, forward, loop, um, click, undo, and then you can also map them to the F controls, which are common in a lot of DAWs. And this really does save you a lot of time. Similarly, um, you've got this screen in the middle here, which allows you to really genuinely edit. If you're using something that's mapped to Panorama to edit a lot of things without even looking up, you keep, can keep your hands on the keyboards while dialing in an EQ um, or mixing or adjusting the sound of like a stock instrument. And that's great. It is a real time saver. It's clear. It works in pretty bright light. Um, I've never had a problem seeing it in my uh, my room can get pretty bright. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is just these faders here. Um, you've got nine of them, which you can either map to the, uh, like, an or for example, organ draw bars or something like that, if that's the sound you want to do. I tend to use them more for mixing. Uh, this maps really well to a mixer, and this allows you to kind of do multiple mixer moves at once if you want to bring sections in and up relative to each other. And then also on top, you kind of have the pan knobs if you want to do it. Um, and I find that to be pretty useful. They are not the greatest sliders at all, but they're good enough for anything that's not super fine uh, fader writing. They work well enough for 90% of what I want to do. And when they don't work, you see this big silver fader here which is actually a motorized fader with way more control. So like if you want to do vocal rides or if there's a bass part that's tricky, you can make that active and read and write and record its um, playback. And it's actually motorized, so it'll move along with what you're doing. Uh, and that'll help you get the more detailed rides on tracks that need it. In my experience, most tracks don't need it, but it feels good to use for like vocals or bass. Um, then below this screen here, we also have a few more um, function buttons. They let you jump between tracks. Um, if you're using a DAW-based synth, switching between tracks, between banks, that sort of thing, and then between various screens on your DAW. So that section is all really helpful. Um, finally, these can also be used as uh, like rotary controls on a DAW. Um, now, there's a few other things I just don't like about it. Um, basically, there are, there's, I would say, on average, it's a, it's a pretty good keyboard, and I enjoy it. But um, I don't regret having it. I haven't sold it. I'm going to roll with it. But it's, it's like, I think, 500 600 bucks. so it's certainly not the cheapest, um, and it's not quite what I would expect. So the first thing I don't like about it, if you see here, this section, this is the power button right here, and it's way at the back underneath. So it can be, it's really hard to turn on and off if you've got it kind of installed in your uh, studio, um, which is just unfortunate. Um, so I generally just leave it on or I leave it off way longer than I would normally use it when I want to use it because you got I have to pull it out and do all sorts of things like that, which actually brings me to the second point. Um, it is really wide this way, like really wide. I've got a... Um, a really nice mixing desk by output. I've done a review of it before and I'll put a link to it. Um, and even when I pull, so it's, it's, there's a tray under my desk made for mixing. When I pull it all the way out for the keyboard, still I can't access like, I'm looking at it right now below me. Um, when it's pulled all the way out, basically I don't even get to the top of the faders or the top row of pads so probably like literally 
a third of the functions are not usable by default. So then I have to kind of yank it off of my keyboard stand and then I get in this uncomfortable position. Um, so just its width is uncomfortable um, and makes it sort of not as useful as I would say. Um, all in all, I would say this is a very solid keyboard that you should consider buying um, if you're mainly sticking to your DAW, if you're mainly using Logic and the stock instruments, or if you're using mainly Reason and just those instruments, I think I can definitely recommend it. If you're more using the native instruments and you're in that world, I don't know that it's worth the change, uh, especially if you're all contact. And like if I were to start over with everything that I own today, um, I might go for the native instruments complete control instead of the panorama. Um, I don't regret having it, but it's, it's certainly not everything I had hoped it would be. So in summary, <laughs> um, I can tentatively recommend the P4, um, especially if you don't want to be bothered to learn shortcuts in your DAW. And especially also if you have a fully like separate keyboard stand in your studio where you can have your keyboard fully exposed and out and open. But if you're going to be running it on a uh, like stand underneath your desk, it's not quite as helpful. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this. If so, be sure to like and subscribe. Um, also, I've included an affiliate link down below if you want to buy this keyboard. It doesn't cost you anything, and I get a small commission. So hope you enjoyed this. Have a great one. Bye-bye.